your heart, what stirs your soul, what matters comes to mind. The cares you keep, the thoughts you think, it's not all wasted time. Joy still comes in the morning. Hope still walks with the hurting. You're still alive and breathing. Praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming. There's still good news worth repeating. So lift your head and keep singing. Praise the Lord. Years roll by. away from home A father finds a child inside We left for growing old Awake, awake, awake my soul Joy still comes in the morning Hope still walks with the Everything, let everything praise the Lord in the working, in the waiting. Let it praise the Lord in the blessing, in the breaking. Come on, praise the Lord in the dying, the rising. Let it praise. Still comes in the morning. Hope still walks with the hurting. If you're still alive and breathing, praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming. There's still good news worth reading. So lift your head and keep singing. Praise the Lord. Joy still comes in the morning. Still walks with the hurting. If you're still alive and breathing, praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming. There's still good news worth repeating. So lift your head and keep singing. Praise the Praising the Lord. You've got to do a little move body movement with that one. So it is so good to have uh, all of you here today. It is wonderful to have the people who are joining us online. And we just want all of you to join in with your hearts and your minds and your spirit. That we are here to worship a holy and loving God. So I want to just say one quick word. There are little folders on the end of your chairs, the end of your row, if you'll at some point in time begin to pass those forward. And in those folders are uh, prayer cards. And Pastor David and I take those very seriously, and we pray over them, and we also make sure that those remain confidential. So if you've got a prayer, for someone else that you care about or love or an uh, issue that you are going through, then feel free to use those cards. And, uh, and we'll make sure that we honor them as well. 
So during this time, we usually make sure we not only let you know that we're glad you're here from this side, but that you're, we're glad you're here as you greet one another. So would you take just a minute, find someone perhaps you don't know, and say, I'm so glad you've come here today. Can you do that? Let's go past the peace of Jesus Christ. Bob, is that better? Okay. Yeah, the sound is different up here now. This journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. If the story isn't good, failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Father's in the room, prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life, love is on the move when the Father's in the room, miracles take place, the cynical find faith, love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. You are good, you are 
are good when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love on display for all to see. You are light, you are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sins. When my fear is crippling You are true, you are true Even in my wandering You are joy, you are joy You're the reason why I sing You are life, you are life In you death has lost its sting What's your week been like? Huh, would you really tell me? <laughs> well, if you've been anywhere close to the news, you know that our world is not at peace quite yet. We've been awakened to the sound of war for one of our world neighbors. And so we must, as a people of God, remember that we are striving to be a people who are trying to make the kingdom of God right here. But we're not there yet. 
I don't know what it's been like in your home. I don't know if there are wars there. I don't know if there are wars here. Wherever your war or your struggle toward peace or your celebration of peace happens to be today, we have come to a holy, loving, and living God. And we're going to pray to that God right now. Gracious and almighty God, God of heaven and earth, holy God, to a God who is still listening, for our neighbors, God, we pray for them. For our families, God, we pray for them. For our own hearts, souls, past or present, we pray that there might be peace that reigns. And so God, as we come to you, as we hear your word, as we sing the songs of praise, as we remember the blessings of life, as we reconcile our past, our future, as we come to you in a moment where your name rings out louder than all other names, we remember that you are right there, right there. And we reach out to you. We call to you. We sing to you. In the next few minutes, we will hear Holy Scripture. We will hear words of relevance. And we will hear and have opportunities that are truly life-changing. Enter into us this day, holy God. Be with us this day, God of peace. And as we lean our ear to yours, may that God, the God that reigns, the God who creates, and the God that makes all things new, be ours. And now we bring our voices. As people of God, we, we, we draw our voices together and we say the prayer that you taught. So long ago, we say it again today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. My name is David, and I'm proud to be one of your pastors, along with Pastor Rusty. Welcome to worship, friends. A few announcements as we uh, continue on in worship. First, you'll find this insert in your bulletin. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, Wonders and Signs is the name of our new storytelling ministry at Faith. Uh, every Sunday in the month of October, we're inviting storytellers, members of our congregation, to come up front and, and tell their faith story uh, to the congregation. 
I will say uh, right now that our faith story today deals with some pretty sensitive issues. So for, for younger ears uh, in, in the room, if, uh, when it comes time for the, for the story, I'll make, uh, parents can make the call about uh, what, uh, what to do. Uh, you'll, this uh, QR code is a survey that I'm putting out. Um, I'm studying if, as part of my uh, doctoral uh, work the effects of uh, faith stories on our congregation. It's completely voluntary. You don't have to take it. Uh, it's all going to be confidential. Uh, but uh, before, if you would like to fill out the survey in advance of our uh, storyteller today, I'd be uh, very appreciative. On to more fun things. You probably noticed the pumpkins. Who, who helped me out lifting pumpkins last week? How are your shoulders? Are they still there? Mine are barely functioning. Uh, thank you for everyone who showed up to lug, uh, uh, lug pumpkins last week. Uh, we do need uh, people to work the pumpkin patch to help us sell these pumpkins. There is a uh, list out in the Narthex, our gathering area, uh, uh, to sign up to work the pumpkin patch. Uh, we do need someone to work at 3 o'clock today. <laughs> so if that's you, <laughs> if you're available, uh, we'd love for you to be there. Speaking of 3 o'clock today, we're having a blessing of the animals service. It's less of a service and more of a come bring your animal and have it blessed. Pastor Rusty and I will be outside with some dog treats and cat treats, and we will bless your animal. Uh, uh, children in the room, if you don't have a pet at home and you want to bring a lovey for it to be blessed, I will be honored to bless your lovey, okay? I uh, would love to see cats, dogs. I heard there's going to be a goat. Uh, this is, there might be peaches to snake uh, coming, so please, please do, please do come. And finally, on the back of your bulletin is just all of our stuff having to do with uh, October. We just have so much going on here, so many ways to be involved. I want to lift up Beat the Heat with Movies in a Treat. We would call it Trunk or Treat, but it's indoors. We're going to be putting up tables inside the church uh, for uh, our kids to come and trick or treat. Uh, my family is doing The Wizard of Oz, so that's taken. Okay, so we do need people. We do need people to make booths, trunks, uh, please let me or Miss Debbie, our children's director, know if you're going to do it. We also need candy donations. Uh, you can bring candy next week to give to the cause. Enough logistics. Let's go to God in prayer. Glorious God, we offer ourselves to you in prayer, in our financial gifts that we're about to give. With our very thoughts, we give it all to you. Take what we have to give you today, God. Even our voices as we lift them up in praise to you. Take what we have to give to build up your church and build up your kingdom here on earth. In the name of Christ, we do pray. Amen.
Good morning again. Our faith storyteller today is Miss Allie Strand. Uh, every faith storyteller uh, has, um, oh, I gave him ground rules. So uh, every story, every faith story has to be on theme, matching the, the week's uh, sermon message. Everyone has five minutes with the all-important one-minute grace period. Uh, every story has to, in some way, preach Jesus. And um, gosh, I'm, I know I'm missing one thing. Oh, and then uh, every storyteller is courageous enough to come up here without notes. Again, uh, oh, uh, today's message deals with some sensitive issues. We do have uh, Sunday school available for all ages in the children's wing going this way and nursery available at the end of the hall. Miss Sally, why don't you come up? Hey, y'all. I just like bring the whole box of tissues up with me because like just to bring three is like not going to work. So um, I feel really blessed to have this opportunity to share this story with you. Uh, one weekend in our modern world of today, I had a healing encounter with Jesus Christ. We're all given a different path to walk in this world. And one of the obstacles on my path is dealing with a severe and at times unrelenting mental illness. It's led me to a place of deep despair and hopelessness and loneliness. And I tell you, trying to live your life without hope is not living at all. I came to faith in 2012, and I had an awareness, a deep awakening of what I call the crucified Christ. I came to know what it was that Jesus had done for me, for all of us. He had died for our sins, reconciled us with God. In 2014, I found myself on the walk to Emmaus. And there was a Saturday night that I was sitting in the chapel. It was about, it was after nine and it was dark. It was a small chapel and the only light was candlelight. There were stained glass windows that ran along the sides and rows of pews and the candlelight bounced off the stained glass and off the shiny pews. And I was left side all the way in the back, crammed way over in the left corner. And I was sitting there wondering why it was that despite a great doctor, a really good therapist, taking my meds and knowing God, why did I still have that bottle of little blue pills that I kept in the medicine closet? My escape hatch, if it just got too hard. So I was sitting there because I knew that the, this loving God didn't, didn't want that for me but I couldn't see beyond the despair. Now, as far as I know, I was alone in the chapel, but I wasn't because what I came to realize is that night, I had an encounter, not with the crucified Christ, but with the living Christ, the risen Christ. And it was as if he brought to mind for me just exactly all the ways that he had been there for me in all those despairing times that I thought I was alone. And he had me reflect on the love and the fellowship of that weekend and all the things that I had learned but there was a catch, 
And the catch is that in order to move forward, I had to be willing to let go. I had to let, let go of the safety hatch. It was hard to believe that anything would be different. There's a story in Mark chapter 9. It comes after the transfiguration. There's a story about a man whose son is consumed by an evil spirit. And Jesus comes upon the scene. There's a lot of chaos going on, and he uh, asks what's going on. And the boy's father comes running up to him, and he said, my son, he's possessed by an evil spirit. It throws him into water. It throws him into fire. It tries to kill him. If there's anything you can do. And Jesus says to the Father pretty much what he said to me that night in the chapel. And that was, he said, if. He said, all things are possible for one who believes. And the father's response is very much like mine. Jesus, I believe, but help my unbelief. And I made a promise. I made a promise to Christ that I would try to have faith and trust and step out and let go. So I went to the spiritual director of the retreat I told her what had happened. We prayed together and I recommitted my life to Jesus. I recommitted my life to living. And um, then the next day was the closing of the retreat and I was able to speak publicly and share what the weekend had meant to me. And I publicly said, I'm gonna try and live my life I'm going to give up the little blue pills. I'm going to try. And I had said it out loud. And I came home. I told my pastor. I shared with my family the change. And the next time I saw my psychiatrist, the same man I still see today, he's a man of faith, I thanked him for how hard he had tried to keep me alive, and I gave him that bottle with the little blue pills. And when I walked out of there, there was a sense of liberation. Am I trying to tell you that everything's perfect now? No, it is not. Do I still have a mental illness? Yes, I do. But what I have today is a relationship with Jesus. I didn't know that my spirit was sick too. I didn't know that that was the missing piece for me. So I have the hope of Christ on a daily basis. I have a little sign in my bathroom that says, just enough grace for today. They say, you know, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We see it on the keychains all the time and on the magnets. But y'all, I'd like to believe that my life is an example of that. And I hope this story is an example of that. Because I promised Jesus I would tell this story so that you guys would know he really does care. He's really here with us. And he wants to be in relationship with us. And he still heals us. One day at a time. Thank you for listening. Scripture. Beautiful. I'm going to get my Kleenex. Okay. She almost forgot her Kleenex. Good job. Hey. It takes a lot of courage. It does. Life transformed. Baptized in grace. I'm going to ask that you stand for the reading of God's word. It's found in the Gospel of Luke. I know it's here. 
In the 10th chapter, in the 38th verse, it begins, Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the reading of God's word for the people of God, and we respond, thanks be to God. You may be seated. I met the living Jesus through Bible study. Uh, I have always been a church member, but I haven't always followed Jesus because those, those overlap, but they're not the same thing. The change happened for me uh, when I was in high school. I was, uh, before that, I was, I was uh, baptized in my, my home, United Methodist Church in North Carolina. I uh, went to youth group. I went to confirmation class. They took me to Sunday school didn't really have a relationship with Jesus. In high school, I really uh, had a, a crisis of faith. I, I really doubted Christianity. It's really because I doubted the Bible. Really had a hard time with the Bible. I didn't know if I could trust the Bible. I didn't know if, I really had a hard time interpreting it word for word. And so I thought about walking away from faith, but I didn't really want to walk away from faith. And it hit me that I had never actually read the Bible. Like I'd never, I never read the thing, even though I was going to walk away from the thing. So the senior year, uh, my, the summer before my senior year, I was like 17 years old. I decided to read the Bible. Uh, here's what I did: I took out my teen study Bible. You know, they, they, in youth group they give you a, a, a Bible just for teenagers, and you know what I did with it? Absolutely nothing. I never read the thing until that summer. I, I uh, didn't have anything going on that summer. I didn't have a job or anything, so I had plenty of time on my hands. I took the lawn chair out of my parents' garage, and I went back into our backyard in the summertime, because you can go outdoors in the summer in North Carolina. It's totally okay. And I sat in the lawn chair, and I read, uh, I read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, for the very first time. I never read them before for myself. And I nerded out here. I had a highlighter, and I had a pen. And I highlighted the verses that really stuck out to me, and I wrote in the margins. And I read about Jesus. I, I really, was really, really captivated by him. I loved him. I loved his heart for the poor. I loved his heart for the oppressed and the marginalized. I loved how he lived a life of service and self-sacrifice. I really liked how he called out the hypocrisy of organized religion, right? And I did not fall in love with religion that summer, but I did fall in love with Jesus. I did. It was there in that lawn chair that I started to follow Jesus. I want that for you. I want that, you, I want that for you. I want you to have a relationship with Jesus. A lot of the times it comes from Bible study, from reading about him, from reading this book. We're in a series of sermons here at Faith that we're calling people of faith. <laughs> By people of faith, we mean people of faith everywhere, people of faith in Jesus throughout all time and all over the world. And we're talking about the people of faith here in this church. Faith. <laughs> what is it that we do around here? When we ask people to join the church, what is it that we ask you to do? Well, we're lifting up five habits, five practices. This is what we do around here. This is what we want you to do and uh, what, what I want to do here. Last week, we looked at the habit of worship. People of faith worship weekly and worship daily through our prayers. I asked you to pray five times a day last week. This week, we're looking at the practice of study. Study. We study the Bible around here. That's just what we do. 
What does that mean? People of faith study the Bible together in community. And we read our Bibles. We read our Bibles, I hope, every day. Now that takes me to our, our scripture for today. Pastor Rusty read for us the story of Mary and Martha out of the Gospel of Luke. It's the Gospel of John that tells us that Mary and Martha were the sisters of Lazarus. That Lazarus, the one Jesus raised from the dead. Jesus, in the Gospel of Luke, goes to pay Mary and Martha a visit. Luke never mentions Lazarus at all. He, Jesus wants to see Mary and Martha. He, Jesus is probably making his way to Jerusalem for Passover. Uh, he would go to Passover uh, every year. Mary becomes one of the models in Scripture for what it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus. Mary, Mary the sister of Lazarus, which is really fascinating for two reasons. First, in Jesus' culture, it, the only disciples were men who learned from men. But here's Mary, a woman, in, a, in an equal place with men, learning from Jesus. We're supposed to see that Jesus' call is radically inclusive. Jesus didn't just come for a certain segment of society. Jesus came for, for everybody. He wants everybody. And it's fascinating that Mary would be the model for a disciple because you, you would think it would be Martha. Martha the servant. Martha the doer. See, Martha plays the role of a good host. She, she serves Jesus. She probably cooks for Jesus, feeds Jesus, cleans up Jesus' dishes after mealtime. We would call Martha a good servant, a good doer. Jesus calls her distracted. And all of her doing for Jesus, she is distracted from simply being with Jesus and listening to Jesus. She's so distracted. In fact, in, in the Gospel of Luke, this story about Mary and Martha comes directly after a more familiar passage, the story of the Good Samaritan, a story about doing, about loving your neighbor, even when it's a huge inconvenience. The Gospel of Luke's trying to say, by putting Mary and Martha here right after that, hey, don't get, don't get to thinking that doing for Jesus is more important than listening to Jesus. Actually, we are in relationship with him first and listen to his voice. And then we go out and we do for him. Mary, not Martha, is the model for what it looks like to be a disciple. So what does Mary do? She listens to Jesus. She listens to the word of God. She listens to the word, and the word is Christ. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the, the ultimate revelation or God's self-disclosure to the world. God's ultimate revelation of who God is to the world. Jesus is the Word of God. Sometimes we say Scripture, the Bible, is the Word of God. And that's true in the sense that the Bible is words about God. They're accurate words, truthful words about who God is and what God wants for us. But Jesus is the Word from God. Jesus is God saying, this is who I am. This is what I'm all about. This is my heart, and this is what I want for you. John chapter 1 begins this way. Uh, John, uh, the Gospel of John chapter 1 begins this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. Jesus is the Word of God. What does that mean? It means the Bible describes for us who God is and what God wants for us. But Jesus dictates who God is and what God wants from us. As in, Jesus is God speaking from God's own mouth. This is who I am. If, for example, I could, uh, I could recommend a book to you, a book I love, and I, I could paint you a picture with my beautiful words about what this book is all about. Or I could give you the audio book, and you can listen for yourself, Right? Jesus is that audio book from God saying, hey, this is who I am. Whereas the Bible is, tells us these wonderful words, truthful words about who God is. We go to Jesus to hear straight from the source. Now, what does that mean about Bible study? It means the Bible is the primary uh, curriculum, if you will, about how we learn about who God is and what God wants for us. 
And Jesus is the teacher. Jesus is the teacher of the curriculum. We, we study this curriculum. We read this book and we, we hear the teacher's voice speaking to it, speaking through it to us. We're to do what Mary does. Mary sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. We're to sit at the Lord's feet and listen to what Jesus is saying through, through the words of Scripture. That's what a disciple does. The word disciple means uh, learner, student, or pupil. Jesus never asks for converts to a, a religion. He asks for students of him. We, we go to him to, to learn from him. How? By reading, by studying scripture. Jesus says at the, at the end of the gospel of Matthew, he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. What are we supposed to do as followers of Jesus? We're to be his students. And then go and make some more students. How do we learn from this teacher? We study what he left us, his curriculum, his scripture. I think of uh, my high school, no, my middle school ice hockey coach. I grew up playing ice hockey in North Carolina for some strange reason. I loved ice hockey. I, would, uh, I loved practice a lot, too. We would show up to practice, and my coach, Coach Dave, he would ask us to take a knee on the ice, and he was still standing. That's how he taught us, coached us, him standing, us taking a knee on the ice. He always had a whiteboard with him when he was doing this, and he had a dry erase marker. And on the whiteboard was a, a diagram of an ice hockey rink. And he would map out plays for us, and he'd, he'd mark where we're supposed to be if we're going to actually score and win the game. I love that image. It's the image of who we are as disciples. There's Jesus, our coach. and We, like Mary, take a knee. We sit at his feet. What has Jesus left us? He's left us the whiteboard. He's left us Scripture. Jesus coaches us through this so that we might learn the way of life, learn truth, learn about God, and learn what God wants for us. A little bit more about just what the Bible is and what, it is, what it's supposed to be for us. Paul says uh, in one of his letters to Timothy, he says, all Scripture is inspired by God. Uh, Paul's, in Paul's original Greek, inspired by God is one word, theonoustos, means God. God breathed. What do we do with our breath? We speak with it. We speak with it. For, for Scripture to be God breathed means that the Holy Spirit is always speaking to us through the words of Scripture. Now that, that doesn't mean God reached down from heaven and wrote every single word of the Bible. No, no, no. It means that we can count on the Spirit always speaking to us through the words of Scripture. We go to the Bible and we listen for the coach's voice breathed through this library. We say that the uh, Scripture is God's primary means of revelation. It's God's favorite way of speaking to us, telling us, again, who God is and what God wants from us. It's not the only way God speaks to us, but it is, it's the loudest way God speaks to us because the Spirit is always calling out to us, shouting out to us, saying, Come learn about me through Scripture. And when we encounter uh, passages and teachings in Scripture that are just really hard to understand, especially in the, Old, in the Old Testament, what I do is I go back to the coach. How would Jesus interpret this? What would Jesus say about this? I try to take a WWJD approach to Scripture. What would Jesus discern? Jesus is our interpretive lens or interpreting Scripture for our time and our place, what would Jesus discern for us? So that's a bit about Bible and Bible study. Here's what I am asking you to do in this series. Here's my invitation for you today. I hope you read your Bible every day. Every day. I want you to do something uh, with me. Uh, lift up your hands and look up your two hands. Look at your two hands. Every habit in our series has, some, has a communal component, something we do together, and an individual component, something you do on your own. 
with worship last week, I ask you to worship together. Worship together as a community. Clench your right hand together. You do that habit together. Community. We worship together. And then I asked you last week to worship with your prayers every day by praying five times a day. When it comes to Bible study, I hope you study Scripture together in community, in a group, together. We'll get to that in a moment, that habit in a moment. Right now, look at your left hand. I, I hope you read five verses of your Bible every day. Five verses every day. That's the threshold. Five verses every day. That's too low for you, and I hope it is. Aim for five chapters a week. Read five verses a day, five chapters a week. What, I, what I'm inviting the people of faith to do. You might go, well, how do you do that? How do you actually read the Bible? Well, I, I find, and this worked for me, start with the Gospels. It's always a good idea to start with Jesus. If you've never really read your Bible, start with the Gospels. Uh, they're in the New Testament. Start with the book of Matthew. And then I, I also recommend this practice to you. It's an ancient way of reading the Bible called Lectio Divina. Uh, Lectio Divina. It's Latin for divine reading or sacred reading. It's when you read a few verses of Scripture, not much, just a few verses, and you read it through multiple times, praying your way through it, asking God questions at the end of each one. There's a process here. After the first uh, reading, you ask yourself, well, what's jumping out to me? What is speaking to me through this passage? What word or phrase is God really using to, to pop out at me? Then you read it a second time and you ask, what is this passage telling me about God? How is this passage, passage revealing to me who God is, what God is like? Then you read it a third time. And you ask, how is this passage telling me what God wants for me and for the world? That's the application piece where you're really asking for, for God to tell you, how am I going to live differently? Or how, how is this, this scripture really hitting home in my life? And then you pray. You end this process with prayer. You ask, how will I follow Jesus closer because of what I just read? Like Dio Divina should take about maybe about 10 minutes of your time. 10, min 10 minutes of your time every, every day. So uh, this week, I, I did this. I did like Dio Divina this week. I had a, I had a hard week this week. Nothing, nothing uh, catastrophic, nothing to write home about, but I had a hard week. And so when I have a hard week, I go to the Psalms. I went to Psalm 34. I want to read Psalm 34, this, these few verses to you. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. So I worked that process. What jumped out to me from that passage is what God does, God's verbs. God sees us when, we're, when no one else does. God, God hears us when nobody else hears us. God is with us when it feels like we're alone. God is near to the brokenhearted. And that tells me a bit about who God is. God is someone who sees you when nobody else sees you. God's the one who pays attention to you when it feels like everyone kind of ignores you. God's the one who listens to you when nobody else really cares. God's the one who comes close to your broken heart when, not if, when that happens. God's the one who comes right by your side when really what you need right now is a friend. And what did that do for me this week? How did it hit home for me? Just, just knowing that God sees me and God hears me and God is always with me gave me what I needed to keep going. Keep pushing. Don't give up. Keep persevering. That's what I needed. However you read your Bible, friends, the most important thing is to do it. Do it. Make it a habit, a daily habit. These habits that we're going through in this series, they take us from being a believer, which Jesus asks us to do in the Gospels, but not as frequently as Jesus asks us to be a disciple. These habits we do take us from being a believer, being a disciple, to being one of his students. It's about what we do. 
But what does a disciple do? A disciple disciples. A disciple studies, learns, reads. It's like, how do you become a runner? <laughs> Having the shoes does not make you a runner. You got to run. Uh, how do you parent? Having a child does not make you a parent. You got to parent every day. It's work. You do it. How do you, how do you become a spouse? I've learned that saying the words and having the ring doesn't make you a spouse. You got a spouse every day, something you do every day. Same thing with being a disciple of Jesus. You disciple every day. Here's where I want to uh, leave you today. With this habit we do together, I invite you to study the Bible together as a community with friends. That's why we have Bible study groups and Sunday school classes here at Faith. At 10 o'clock, we have groups meeting throughout the church. If you, if you aren't in one, please see me or Pastor Rusty after the service. We'd love to get you plugged in. We have classes that meet throughout the week. Let us know. We'd love to get you plugged in. Studying Scripture together is just what the people of faith do. It's what we've always done. In the, in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2, Acts tells us what the earliest church did. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Four actions there. They learned, they fellowshiped, they ate together and they prayed. That's church. The first thing is they learned. They came together around the teaching of God, around scripture. They learned. One of the healthiest group of Christians I've ever seen uh, was a Sunday school class. They called themselves the challengers. Uh, the average age of the challengers was somewhere in their 70s, maybe 75. These people have been doing life together for about 30 years, at least three decades. Uh, they were a fun bunch. They would party together well into their 80s. Uh, they would go out to Tex-Mex restaurants together, celebrate the holidays. They, they, I'm sure they have a Halloween party scheduled at somebody's home for later on this month. They always had a service project they were doing together, they were always collecting money for a cause out in the world. They uh, buried parents together, buried children together, went through divorces together, uh, buried their spouses together. And there come Sunday, every Sunday, they showed up to the table with their Bibles and they studied, they learned. I want that for you. I want that for you. I want that kind of community for you. We have a strategic planning team that's been meeting here at Faith. Next month, we're going to uh, roll out a new mission statement. Let's throw it up on the screen. I want you to say this with me. Grow in faith together to love like Jesus. That's what we do here. We're in the growing business. We grow up, we grow out, we grow old. We grow up in our faith. We grow up in our relationship with Jesus. And we study together, when we come together. We grow out in service. We grow out in love of neighbor and the world. And I want to grow old with you. It's going to take me a long time. I know. I'm at least going to grow older with you. We want to grow older together in community because we are a family of families. We're not going to let the issues and cultural wars of our time pull us apart. We're going to worship together, study scripture together, grow up together, and then serve out in the world, grow out in love together, all while growing older together as friends, as a faith family. And we know we, we know we will be doing a good job. We can say mission accomplished when we come to look more like Jesus, when we love like him, when our very lives come to resemble his life. Because what the world needs now more than ever isn't more converts. The world needs disciples who are growing together. I hope you read five verses a day or five chapters a week. Grow in faith together. Bring a lawn chair. Would you pray with me? Loving and everlasting God, we search your scriptures to hear your voice. And we, we come expecting not just believing, but expecting, counting on hearing you. 
We sit at your feet, Lord, and listen to your voice. God, we confess that the Bible's hard. Reading, reading the Bible is hard. Uh, sometimes what we find in it kind of shakes us, confuses us, even shocks us. And so, Jesus, we go to you, our coach, to hear your voice, speak to us. And God, at the end of the day, draw us closer to one another so that we might be your family, your people of faith. Amen. And would you please rise for the last song. This is, Oh, How I Need You. <clears throat> and we are going to teach you the beginning of this song. So if you don't sing, just say the words, okay? Lord, I find you in the seeking. Lord, I find you in the doubt. And to know you is to love you and to know so little else I need you. Oh, how I need you. to see you at three o'clock today for blessing of the animals bring your animals bring your loveys if you'd like and the spirit has somebody who's going to work the pumpkin patch at three o'clock today please go and bear witness to the love of god in this world so that those to whom love as a stranger might find in you a generous friend go at the love of god the grace of his son jesus christ and the peace of the holy spirit yesterday today and forever amen Light on your slide, I will go 